Installing heat pumps can be tricky, especially when dealing with microbore pipework, where small mistakes can lead to big problems. Plus, with so much misleading advice on social media, it's very easy to get confused. Here's the thing, microbore pipework is one of the main reasons why people hesitate to install heat pumps. Today I'll show you what to watch out for and how to decide if you need a buffer or if you can go direct without one on those systems. By the end of this video you'll have much clearer understanding of how to tackle heat pump installations on microbore systems. This five bedroom house built in 2003 still running on original non-condensing boiler. It's been here for over 20 years. So running pipe work here from the garden to the airing cupboard on the first floor is going to be a challenge. What's even a bigger challenge is the fact that we've got 10 millimeters microbore pipe work in plastic piped to all the radiators. The problem we have when we install a heat pump here, we have to double the flow rate. Old boiler, was running at DT11, new heat pump will run at DT5 or less most of the year actually. And with every doubling of the flow, the resistance of the pipe work quadruples. So we need four times more pumping power to overcome that resistance with doubling of the flow. So what you need to understand is how to calculate what's called an index circuit or a circuit with the highest resistance. So you know if your pump in the unit can overcome resistance of that circuit or if you might have to put additional pump on the system. However, you can't calculate the index circuit unless you know the heat loss of the property, room by room. This property has heat loss of 5 kilowatts, 5.2 kilowatts to be precise, and the biggest heat loss is in the living room, 800 watts, followed by the kitchen, 750 watts. So you would assume that the living room will be the index circuit. However, in the living room, We've got a couple of K2 radiators, each doing 400 watts. And in the kitchen, we've got a single K3 rod that's supposed to do around 750 watts. And this is our most likely index circuit. Another thing to mention, we've got an airing cupboard floor above and the heating pipe work goes up to the uh, second floor and then comes back. So this is most likely the longest run of a uh, pipe work. How do we know that this pipe work will be adequate for 750 watts? It's only 10 mil. You need to look into uh, pressure loss tables for uh, plastic pipe work. And if you find them, you'll see that at the heat pump DT, so the difference between flow and return of five degrees, we're gonna get a pressure loss of 307 millimeters per every meter of this pipe work, or uh, three kilopascals, or thereabouts. We have this pipe work running in the wall, 2.4 meters, and then in the ceiling above here, all the way across to a T where it reduces from 15 mil. And the total run of this pipe work uh, is around six meters per leg. So flow and return, we add those together, we get 12 meters. So we have to multiply 12 meters by uh, three kilopascals and you're gonna get around 3.6 uh, meters head loss, head loss. If you add fittings to it, that's probably over four meters pressure loss just on a microbore. We still don't include other distribution pipe work coming before the T to this radiator. So we have no chances of being able to run at least this radiator relying purely on the circulator in the external unit. So calculating your index circuit on heat pump installations is crucial. It's always best to know what's gonna happen before you do your installation. And the only way to do it is to first do heat loss, then figure out your index circuit, and then calculate the pressure loss. Now, obviously you're gonna say, how do I know where the pipes run? How do I know the length of the pipes? You don't. So you have to make assumptions. You will not always get it right, but making certain assumptions by measuring how far the pump or the existing boilers from the radiators, where you think the pipe runs might be. You can turn the boiler on on the survey, take a thermal camera and see where the pipes are. So it's better to have an informed guess than not to calculate it at all. So what options do we have if you want to make sure that this setup will work well? You can repipe. That's usually very disruptive and expensive. Uh, or we can use separation and put a secondary pump 
to overcome resistance of this setup. However, what I'm going to do here, because this is my index circuit and I know this is big pressure loss on microbore, I've got the ceiling over me already opened. I'm going to re-pipe this section because I can see where it tees into 15 mil. Leaf, 10 mil in the wall, that's going to be 4 meters but replace everything I can get to on this radiator. So it's kind of lucky that my index circuit is in the kitchen where I'm also running primaries in the ceiling because it gives me a chance to replace this pipe pork. So I'm going copper from the heat pump to the inside, but as soon as I go inside, I'm switching to a uh, multi-layer composite pipe pork as it's a godsend for going across the joists. You can run it so much easier. With, with copper, it will be pretty much impossible to go across the joists. not too bad it did go in I just need to get a uh, heating expansion vessel in here and controls maybe maybe it will fit what we have is a three pipe buffer so the flow goes in behind uh, from the heat pump the flow comes out to the system on the top and the return it's just one pipe, so this is a three pipe return buffer. Return from heating comes here, goes to the buffer and then goes back to the heat pump. Reason for the gate valve is because I can fully isolate. If I turn this gate valve off, I can fully isolate the buffer. So it's like running the system without a buffer at all. We'll be able to flush the system by passing the uh, buffer, but we'll also be able to try to see if it's at all possible to run the whole system without a secondary pump without the buffer, just relying on the circulator in uh, the heat pump outside. We need 900 liters per hour of flow through the system, and I want you to make a prediction. What do you think? How many liters per hour will we get through this system with the buffer bypass, not using secondary pump, just relying on the pump inside uh, the external unit? And the other prediction is, will it run at all, or will it just throw an error and say, no, I'm not having it? So, pause the video, go to the comment sections and leave your predictions in liters per hour of the flow and if you think it will run at all or not. So now I'm going to disconnect this pump and see what happens when this system runs only on the circulator in the heat pump. So now we're getting full flow of 860 liters per hour without the post, post buffer pump. So there is a chance it will work. However, we don't know if we're getting circulation to our index circuit. This system runs without a post buffer pump. It's not needed, but it runs at 100% circulator power in the external unit. And it just about meets the flow rate. What would you do in this situation? Leave a comment below. Let me know. Would you remove that pump and repipe the buffer into a volumizer? Or would you keep the buffer and keep the post buffer pump? And I'll show you what we are going to do in a second. But before that, you've got a problem downstairs. Get a first leak. Mm, probably should have replaced them. So, well, we'll have to replace them now. We took pipes out, put pipes into old rubbers. So, yeah, 20 year old push pit. Yeah has a right to leak. We have to swap them for new ones. I'm gonna keep that pump. And also, I'm not gonna only keep it. I'm gonna swap this six meter pump into eight meter pump. Now, the reason being is that pump has to run at 100% to overcome the uh, resistance of the system and provide me uh, 800 liters uh, per hour flow. It actually, even at 100% setting, doesn't quite meet the flow, which is surprising because that's a six meter pump. And the pump in the unit has 5.5 meter uh, remaining head and it's nice because they both 130 uh, or 13 centimeters uh, long so direct replacement this uh, 8 meter one is just a little bit deeper if you look at them side by side now we are running this setup at 8 meter head wilo and it works fine the, the wilo pump is at 
half power and it gives us 0 0.8 0 0.9 cubic meters of flow per hour which is obviously 800 900 liters what we need and this whole setup proves that heat pumps can easily work on micro bore and at a push they can work without the buffer but this system was literally on the edge between if it should be buffered or not and in the end we made a decision yes we're gonna buffer it i don't want that circulator in the external unit running flat out all the time it's gonna get weaker with time it's gonna slow down and if they balanced correctly same flow on both sides of this buffer uh, then efficiency isn't really uh, affected in in a great way it's still going to be a scope of four on heating on this setup pretty easily and we'll prove it we'll come back here in the winter just to show you how well this setup uh hopefully would have performed and if you enjoy videos with difficult installations if you enjoy videos where i show you where heat pumps are installed in scenarios that are well far from optimal you should watch this video where i install a heat pump in an uninsulated victorian house